Okay, so we have this ruffle all ready to go and it's really fun and I love red for the kitchen. It's just like such a kitcheny color, retro kitcheny color, I guess. Oh, and if you're wondering <laughs> about my color coordinated pins, these are the colors the pins come in when you get the little sewing kit from Cricut. And I had just put them all in here and one of my children color coordinated them for me. Um, and I just don't have the heart to mix them up <laughs> because I thought it was really cute. So there's there is no like secret professional whatever reason why these pins are color coordinated, although I guess it could come in handy at times if you want to use different colors for different things. They're that way because one of my kids did it and being a mom, I can't undo it. <laughs> so now we're going to take this, this towel and the nice thing about this um, towel here is it has this grommet and it also came with um, the grommet and then the little um, hangy bit here so you can actually hang it up which I have I have a cabinet next to my sink like um, I have the window above my sink and then there's cabinets wall cabinets next to that and I'm putting a little hook on the side of that wall cabinet so I can hang these towels by my sink right um, but night I love that this comes off because then I can put the trim on without having to work around this little dude right so Anyway, I'm going to start where that grommet is so my start and stop is kind of hidden by all of that because <laughs> that's always the messiest part. And all I'm going to do is lift up my hem here and then place the towel right on top of like just right inside my fold over bit and fold this over. I'm leaving like an inch hanging off here um, for our finishing once we've gone all the way around. And I'm just going to go ahead and pin this through all the layers. So pin through all the layers, all the way to the back. Okay, and just every once in a while pin through all the layers, but not through my table, which does have a fabric covering on it. <laughs> I have pinned things to the table, many, 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 many times um, because that's what happens when you have a fabric covering on your table. But this table is actually underneath this is, um, it's like a cork board. It's not actually cork board. It's something, something else, um, but it works like cork. And um, that way I can pin into it, <laughs> which comes in handy in many cases, but it also means since it's covered with fabric, I do sometimes actually pick up the fabric covering with a pen. All right, so now that I've gotten to this corner here, what I'm going to do is miter my corners. So I'm going to kind of put the fold in. And of course I found, I managed to get this corner right at a spot where there's not a lot of ruffle, which is kind of a pain. I may end up move. you know what? I'm gonna cheat this. Yeah, I'm gonna cheat this a little bit we did make a lot of extra like this is why one of the reasons why we have that six inches of extra um, there's kind of a straight spot here and I really do need to have a little bit of gathering there so I'm just gonna kind of pull this over there we go make sure there's a little bit of gathering there and and actually when we get to the other corners I won't really have so much of an option to do that so I'm hoping that you know it just works out that huh, there's a little better luck when we get to the other corners but we'll see <laughs> So, um, here we go, and here we go. All right, so now that I'm at this corner, I'm going to fold it around, right? And then what I do is I kind of put this pin in over here, and then I'm going to turn the back kind of miter, you know, make like a angled, fold that fold in so that, there we go, we get kind of a 45 degree angle on that fold. And then here on the front side, I'm going to do that as well. So pin through there and through the back and just check, I kind of missed the back fold so I'm going to see if I can kind of repin it and catch that back fold a little bit without ow, poking my finger. <laughs> there we go. 
Oh, sorry, you might not have seen that. So I just put it through here and into, um, I pinned it through the back as well there. Um, and my finger apparently. Alrighty, and now we're going to continue that till we get to the next corner and we're going to do all those corners the same. Okay, so I have sewn all the way around here, or not sewn, sorry, I've pinned this trim all the way around, and now I'm going to make this little, end the, the connection a little prettier. So I cut my trim about a half inch away from, um, or about a quarter inch away from the edge of the towel. I cut the whole piece. This was where I started from, right? And then I just pulled on these, the, um, I pulled on this bottom flat piece and, uh, cut some of the thread here and cut the bottom and top both of these flat pieces to be the length of the towel but I still have a little extra from the ribbon right so now I'm just gonna fold that ribbon over and really quickly and I'm just going to hand stitch that down I'm not gonna worry too much about what it looks like it's all gonna get hidden don't worry about that so I'm just really quickly hand stitching this fold. All right, we're just gonna do a little bit of hand stitching to uh, make this look nice and neat because it's really would be a pain to try to do it on the sewing machine, okay? Um, so we're just going to go all the way down to about where that little, um, whoop, where this is the, um, folded the folded over the seam section from the bottom piece of of the ribbon to the top piece of the ribbon so for the end piece of the trim I cut it first initially so that it was um, first initially that was redundant huh I cut it so that it was even with the top of the trim on the the starting piece of trim then I pulled back the flat section of this trim all the way back to the bottom of the starting piece of trim and that would let me um, straighten or ungather this section here and then I trimmed this bottom section of trim of the flat the bot I trimmed the um, bottom half or flat section of this trim so that it was a little longer than the flat or bottom section of this piece of trim okay and I did that on the front and the back. The back one is a little longer, but that's fine. All right, so that is how you cut this piece of trim. Now comes our little fancy pants stuff, <laughs> all right? Um, you can just actually end this piece of, of thread if you want. Um, I think I might do that. It's probably gonna be a little easier for you than leaving it connected. So I'm just gonna end that. I just tied a little knot in there, give it a little clip, and then I'm gonna tie a new knot for the next little bit. Okay, now what I wanna do is fold this flat section of trim so that it's the same length so that it stops. The fold is at the top of the flat section of trim coming from this direction. You see that? You see that? That's what I've done. And I'm going to put a little, I'm gonna put a pin in just that to hold that fold where I want it. So it's just the same length as the top of this flat section of trim. Now I'm going to take this piece that was gathered, I'm going to fold it towards the back and give it a little bit of a um, sewn seam, a uh, sewn uh, hem here. So I'm trying to bury my thread, but apparently that's a lot harder than I expected. Okay, start at the top because you need, when you're done, you need the thread to be at the bottom. So I'm only going to go, no, I'm not gonna go all the way down, just about three quarters of the way down, just sewing this little hem in. Okay, so I've got that little hem sewn in about three quarters of the way down. Now I'm going to take this and get my flat piece lined back up again and kind of pull this edge. 
Here we go. Line it up at the top. Okay, I want what I want to do is get this little piece of my ruffled section of trim so that the top is even with the top of the of this piece of ruffle and this side is even with the side of this piece of the flat section of trim. You see that? I've got that all kind of nice and pretty together. I'm going to give that a little pin in there. And actually, I'm going to kind of readjust this ruffle a bit within that. Okay, I'm trying to get the ruffly section all ruffly and pretty within there. There we go. Now that I've got all that done, I can put this pin back in. Right. Okay, so all that is nice and pretty. Okay, now I'm going to take my thread again and I'm just going to hand stitch carefully through the top, through the, the fold of this flat section of trim and the ruffle. Okay, so I'm just reattaching them because they aren't attached right now. So I'm reattaching those pieces together. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure that I go down this side a bit too because it's still not joined on this side. So I want to make sure that it's all joined and tucked in how I want it so that it's nice and neat and that when I wash this, because it is a hand towel, so it will be washed, um, it doesn't all fall apart, right? You definitely don't want things to fall apart when they get washed. That would be sad. And sure, you could do this on the machine, but it's just going to be a little bit messy. Now I'm going to just poke my needle through to the back, all right, because we haven't really dealt with the back yet. I'm just going to put this pin back in here, trying only to go through some front layers, just to kind of hold everything where I want it. So we can see it looks all nice and pretty on this side now. Now we're going to turn this over. Okay, not so pretty on this side, right? So, oops, it looks like I, when I pulled that needle through the back, I actually pulled it through a extra space here. You might want to be a little careful when you're pulling your needle through to the back. There we go. Okay, so now we've got this kind of bit of a mess on the back. No worries, it's gonna be easy to fix. Well, all we're going to do is take this little piece here, fold it back over, and then fold it underneath, and it looks like it's a lot longer than I need it to be. Here is, here is the top of the fold of this flat section, which is where I need to fold this over. So that means this is a little bit longer than I need it to be. I'm just gonna give it a little clip, there we go. Now I'm going to fold this back piece over so that it is also just to the top of the flat section of this piece of trim. I'm going to put another pin in just to hold it in place and now I have this piece of thread. Now I can take my thread here and just again hand stitch the gathered section of my trim to the flat section of my trim. Okay, not really worrying much about anything other than just sewing these little guys together. I mean, this is all, it's gonna be under that little hook and you know, there's gathers and so on and so forth. It's gonna be totally fine. So get that all sewn together, okay. And I am actually going to go ahead and I'm gonna remove this pin. I'm going to go ahead and sew this all the way down as well. Just this little fold. All right, so look how nice and neat that looks on the back. Now I'm going to carefully put my needle through to the front there we go. Flip it over. Okay. And now what I can do 
is I'm going to hand stitch all the way up this seam, all the way to the top of that little lacy bit, okay? All the way to the top of the gathered bit. So I can actually remove that pin and then just hand stitch this top here. Okay, so we got this little top piece and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hand stitch also I think around this tiny amount that's um, the back and front piece of ribbon are folded, um, are uh, overlapping just a little bit. Okay, so I got that and then I'm just going to put my needle into the back here flip this around, okay, and oh, <laughs> looks like that was actually a, a gather that I sewed down, not so much the um, <laughs> that piece, but that's fine. Um, I'm just going to now give myself a little knot here, because I'm not really worried that I didn't actually catch this piece, because I already um, hand stitched that hem down, so that's totally fine plus it's on the wrong side, but I do like both sides to be pretty at the end anyway. So now I did that knot and clip this. Okay, now whoop, <laughs> don't grab it by a pin. Now let's take a look and you see how pretty that is on the front? Now all we need to do is stitch all the way around. So I'm just going to stitch about a sixteenth of an inch away from this line and then come back and stitch maybe a quarter of an inch away from that line again. So I'm going to go around twice, about a sixteenth of an inch away from the line and about a quarter of an inch away from the line, making sure that I'm catching the back properly. You definitely want to pull out your pins before you get to them and make sure your back is laying properly. None of the folds have come unfolded or anything so that it looks nice. And be really cautious when you're going around the part with the grommet. You do not want to break your sewing machine that gets expensive all right, and causes tears. So there you go. Let's sew that up and then we'll come back. All right, now we have finished this towel. You can see here's the front. See how we have this nice trim all the way around the front and then we have it on the back as well. Okay, and that double set of stitching really helped make sure that if anything wasn't even from the front to the back, it was okay. I would actually recommend when you do your double set of stitching around, you might want to start with the stitch that's a quarter of an inch away and then do the stitch that's about a sixteenth of an inch away. Just because if you do have anything uneven, if you did like not get everything lined up perfectly, that quarter inch away stitch will catch the front and the back. Unless you did something drastically uneven, the quarter inch away will catch the front and the back. Sometimes there's parts of that six, that um, sixteenth of an inch away that doesn't also catch the back. So I do the quarter inch of the way around, all the way around first, and then the sixteenth inch of the way. And again, be careful around that grommet. And then when you're all done, you can put your um, little hangy piece back on. Here we go. All right, and now it can be hung up. And of course it kind of <laughs> gets a little gathered in there now because we have so much extra onto this towel, but that's totally fine. Now you can hang your towel back up and all is happy. So here we have our fun little, you make my heart beat <laughs> kitchen towel. 